Welcome to the fourth most heavily populated country in the world and the largest economy in Southeast Asia. While there is no question that things have improved since the economic crises of the late 1990s, rapid development and urbanization here have taken a serious toll on people's lives and livelihoods. This used to be the lungs of the world, a lush and age-old peatland forest. Now it's one of the biggest sources of greenhouse gases on the planet. It's one of the world's worst ecological disasters. It's become the dumping ground of untreated waste from some 2,000 factories and domestic refuse from 9 million people. 12 million cars, buses and motorbikes clog the city's roads. Its urban areas are bursting at the seams. This pile of rubbish has just been pulled out of this stretch of river. Now the river goes... In 2009, the Green Building Council of Indonesia was established by a group of prominent engineers, designers, architects and developers as a response to some of these issues. The Green Building Council of Indonesia is a non-profit organization and a non-government organization. What we are trying to is educate the community, the public, to understand to have a more sustainable buildings and reducing the energy, have a good indoor air quality and saving the water as well, manage the waste. When we start this movement on 2008, actually it's a, and almost at the end of the 2007 or early 2008, nobody knows about that and nobody knows about what is the green and I think even the government doesn't know. Yes, uh, at the beginning the government really doesn't understand what is actually green building. It's about the performance of the buildings. And people at the beginning thought green building is something to do with planting uh, green, planting plants, uh, painting the building green. Then we begin to talk to them what is behind the green building actually, how we're going to be able to get a good building performance. And from that point, the government began to understand what they need. And the government's really supporting because they began to change as well the national standards to be able to fulfill with the green buildings. So what exactly is a green building? And why do we need them? Okay, uh, a green building, many people are still digesting about what is the green building, which is one, the building is designed, constructed, operate and maintenance based on the green concept to reduce the usage of the natural resources, whether it's energy, water, or even uh, the material. That's number one. Number two is also to minimize the environmental impact. In this case, it's the waste. You know why? Because the waste is, you know, produce the methane, one of the greenhouse gases, and also about how that we can manage the size. We have to look at it uh, through so many uh, different aspects, yes, because of the, uh, from the land use aspect, the building material supply, the technology, the water, the energy, and the people's lifestyle. So it has to be, uh, have a, a minimal effect, if not positive, to the surrounding to the environment not only for uh, we're not talking only about ecological but also social and economic in general it's more like um, something that is a value to you or that is not a value to you why is it important <clears throat> for spaces like this places of learning to be green well um, John Hardy has a great line, uh, he says, you know, it's one thing to talk about green from within a concrete box, um, and it's another thing to actually live it on a daily basis. And, you know, we're here in the middle of Bali, this beautiful island, uh, we're in a place uh, and a location where we could build open air bamboo structures. Um, I think our hope would be that as our students go into the world, make decisions about further courses of study, further uh, employment, uh, whatever their impact on the world is going to be, that somehow this experience uh, uh, touches them a little bit and, and maybe has an impact on the choices they make. You know, once these kids have had a taste of living green, that may not be something that they're going to give up so easily.
most of a client tend to get uh, wrong information that they always think about that the green building is expensive. They always think about the initial cost, not the whole cost. You know, this is always our problem to, to give a good understanding to the client. But especially for the private client, this is easy. Easier than the government client. Why? Because they always think about the business. They compare for the whole cost, compare the initial cost, compare the operational cost, and they are looking for the whole cost. And automatically, for the whole cost, the green building would be less expensive than the normal building. How did you overcome the resistance? Uh, was it was it did it come down to dollars and cents? Oh, was we it a, yeah. Was it a budget thing or or? We calculate everything up to ten years, for instance. We have always benefit not only one or two years, mm -hmm. in up to ten years. Then we have we have uh, the calculations. We show them that is the benefits for the long term. But not for the government building. You know, the government building, they have a, like a, some standard and there is auditor for that. But we are lucky now because uh, Public Works Department, PU, you know, just start with the first green building. And I think we have a good reference to promote other building in Indonesia to use their standards. Uh, bangunan pemerintah kan punya standar. Tetapi kalau bangunan itu biasa, tendernya biasanya mereka kan menawarnya lebih murah. Nah itu yang bedanya, ini penawarannya memang agak lebih tinggi tetapi tetap di bawah paku yang ditetapkan pemerintah. Sometimes when you talk to people that are not uh, involved in detail, is that the green management of the building or factory is naturally more expensive. In reality, you see, um, most likely more expensive in the investment, yes, but most unlikely being more expensive in the operation. If we do the life cycle cost analysis for the lifetime of the building, let's, let's say we take a 50 years on the lifetime, you know that the first cost, investment cost, for the new building is only between 13 until 21%. So what does it mean? 79% of the life cycle cost is on the existing building, on the operation and maintenance, and it is not the first cost. So basically, as soon as you were able to step outside of the short-term thinking, and you were mm -hmm. able to look at a larger picture yeah. and a larger trajectory, mm -hmm. it was pretty clear when you looked at the numbers at least, mm -hmm. that this was actually a sound, solid investment. That's right. You're right. Look, even on the slight chance that that global warming is not as much of an issue as some of us uh, some people seem to think it is, uh, we we still benefit in many many ways as a as a planet by uh, switching over to renewable energy forms. And at some point, frankly, the continuing uh, continuing existing modes of practice, I, I believe, will become uh, too expensive. And uh, whether that's financially expensive or if it starts to come in terms of, uh, of, of, of climate change or uh, human health impact or resource depletion. Um, and, and frankly, that's probably going to be a higher price to pay than any kind of financial price tag that we are, uh, are talking about at this point. So Let's change the question like this. What is the risk for you if you do not implement the green concept? So th this means that if um, the tenants come to me uh, and ask what do you do in order to have an environmentally friendly approach, logically you get the idea that we have to uh, look into aspects that is in Indonesia now covered with greenship. GBCI's greenship rating tools are used to evaluate and certify the environmental performance of buildings in Indonesia. The rating system for new buildings was launched in 2010 followed by the existing building category in 2011. We have six categories in the rating tools. The first is on the site, yeah, an appropriate site development. Number two is energy efficiency and conservation. Number three is about water efficiency. Number four is about the material. Number five is about indoor quality. Number six is about the building environment management. The 
Building Control Indonesia is not a, only the certification body. We are transformation body. Heavily engaged in market transformation practices, GBCI sponsors a variety of campaigns, conferences, workshops, and programs designed to educate stakeholders about what green building is, why we need it, and how they can get involved. Are you, are you seeing a change in, in the discussions you have, in the, in the different conferences you attend around the world? Is this... Yes, um, it's happened sometimes. The industry already responds, but sometimes what happens is that the professional is not aware of it. So we have to be able to uh, to make all the professional as agent of change. The Greenship Associate and Greenship Professional Training programs target industrial and professional associations. GA training provides basic level education for green buildings, while the GP program provides high level competency in greenship certification, as well as assistance for building owners, designers, and managers. You know, when we do some competition for the many tender project, actually the owner tried to do some direct interview about our understanding about the how to how to build the green building how how to implement the green construction and aut automatically we have a very good knowledge you know we got everything from the green building council indonesia actually and when they know when they know that they are we are as the part of the uh, corporate founder of the green building council indonesia they appreciate about that i think personally we are not competing against anybody except the pessimist GBCI also pushes industry to participate in the green building movement through the development and listing of green products. There are currently over 100 corporate members listed in the GBCI membership catalog, representing an array of industries, from property development to explosives manufacturing. We, we can found a supplier that can supply us the plastic that is seems like, but comes from cassava. Like a bioplastic? Like bioplastic. That's what we call it, biodegraded plastic. So, and you call that the, sorry, the, the housing? House? Yes, the case, the cartridge. Cartridge? The housing, yes. The housing? Yes, the cartridge are always good. Always good. So right now you're using a polyethylene, that's not green. Replace. Let's, let's make explosives with? Biodegraded With bioplastic. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. You know, that's I mean, yeah, yeah, that's really that's interesting. Right. In addition to its professional and corporate stakeholder associations, GBCI continues to act as a source of positive change by working directly with Indonesia's government to promote green building standards and practices throughout the archipelago. Menghadapi tantangan ya kita melakukan sosialisasi. Makanya sering sekali kita sekarang kita kan ada badan penyelenggaraan konstruksi. Nah, badan penyelenggaraan konstruksi bekerja sama dengan GBCI Rucho ke daerah-daerah untuk menerangkan bahwa pentingnya green building. Means this is pulled by the certification, pushed by the government, but inside now powered by the people inside. To me, this green building movement is not only a marketing tools. Yeah, we are green and we are more sellable. It's not like that. Yeah, because if we are keep doing it, I don't want at the end we have so many green building on the black mother earth. Yeah, so <laughs> we don't need that. So how can we maintain the whole harmony and make everybody happy? Yeah. Kalau promosinya GBCE seperti sekarang, saya yakin itu kita akan bisa dengan uh, green building yang lebih banyak lagi dan semua sudah mengetahui bahwa green building itu penting dan memang uh, jangan hanya Jakarta minimal kota-kota besar dulu ya From my point of view, the movement of green building councils Indonesia is an important role on the early stage as a voluntary, as a pulling force but the government will take place that one and if it is already done like that then all is already in place, the regulation, the mandatory is there. That is the time for the Green Building Councils to say, finish my job. My mission is already accomplished, then we don't need the councils anymore.